There's some times in life when we have to answer some very important questions. I'm standing in a place called Caesarea Philippi, or Banyas as it is seen on the Israeli map today. But in your Bible, it'll be Caesarea Philippi, and you'll find the story in Matthew chapter 16. When Jesus walked with his disciples all the way up here, it's about 40 miles, some severe mountain climbing, and he wanted to ask them two questions. It turns out at least one of those questions was the most important question that those men had ever answered. The reason Jesus brought the disciples here deals with the history of this place. That cave behind me is very, very important. We've read a lot about the gods of Baal and Asherah in the Bible. Well, in the winter, the legends said about these gods, these false gods, they had to go somewhere because all the crops died. The, the water that Baal was in charge of was suddenly missing because of the way things died in the winter. And the legend said that Baal and Asherah went down underground through this cave, through the gates of Hades, and that's where they remained in the abode of the dead until it was time for the spring. That may not sound like much more than, than history or uh, maybe some legendary tales, and it's true they are, but it, it, gets, it gets really sad. The people believe that Baal required a blood sacrifice and to lure him out of this cave so that spring would come again. There came a time in Israel's history when child sacrifice came here. They would throw a newborn infant into the cave and if blood appeared in the water then the sacrifice had been rejected and another infant was required I mean this place reeks of evil by the time Alexander the Great came in and then the Romans after him by the time Jesus lived all of that influence was here you could take your pick of the God or goddess you wanted to worship in this place the statues and all those niches and crooks and crannies were here and, and it was a cafeteria of religion and so Jesus and the disciples walk here, and as they're around all of these statues, all these religious options, Jesus says, who do people say that I am? Who do men say that I am? Well, they gave him some different answers. Some say you're Elijah. Some say a great prophet. Some say John the Baptist come back to life. Jesus turned and asked that one most important question right then. He said, but who do you say that I am? Can you imagine they walked all this way just to hear that one question? Peter's the one who finally answered. He said, you're the Christ, the son of the living God. No rock God for us. We've seen the miracles. We've seen the evidence. You're the son of the living God. Jesus was very pleased with the answer. And he said to Simon Peter, now at that point he had only been called Simon. His mom had called him Simon. His dad had called him Simon. But he said, I'm going to give you a new name. I'm going to call you Cephas, which means rock. We get the word Peter from that. All around us is a flat rock. I mean, it's, it's just rock everywhere. He said, Peter, here's what I want to do. I want to build my church on this rock, and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. You know, history has shown us that the Catholic Church interprets that passage to say, that's why Peter's the first pope. The Protestant church came along and said, no, it's not that Peter's the first pope. It's what he said. It's his confession that's so important. But you look around here, there's rock everywhere. I mean, this country is filled with rock. And Jesus said, I'm going to build my church on this rock. With all the evil that was going on here, guys, the last thing they would expect is a church right here. But I want you to go and influence your world. I want you to go make a difference. Don't hide from the evil in your community. Avoid it. Don't, don't be involved with the temptations. Don't take part in the evil. But we will attack the gates of hell. This is where those disciples got their marching orders to make a difference. And so the waters of the Jordan River begin here and go all the way down to the Sea of Galilee and all the way down to the Dead Sea. Somewhere along the Jordan River, Jesus was baptized. And as he left this earth after that incredible ministry, he asked us to be baptized. Do you realize the connection here? I want you to be lowered beneath these waters that have come from such an evil place of, of, of all that Baal and Asherah controlled. You're not afraid of the devil. You're not afraid of any evil. 
I want you to go down underneath enemy territory where if you stay long enough, it's, it's true, you'll die physically. But in baptism, you only are under the water for an instant. And then to be raised to that, to that life, see, is so representative of being, being buried after death and raised to the newness of life. Jesus asked us to confront our world and to be clearly identified with him. Baptism is simply a symbolic act of what we're going to do 24-7 as we attack the gates of Hades itself. Thank you. 